you can see in two shapes why this tree behind me is called a bottle tree, right? It's shape. But that's not the only thing that these trees have in common with bottles. In fact, both of them are source of water. These bottle trees had been a source of water to the indigenous people for tens of thousands of years. But then the European farmers came over and they smashed the bottle. So in this video we are going to zoom in on bottle trees. We will firstly classify them a little bit and then we will look at how did they sustain indigenous peoples for tens of thousands of years and then why did the European farmers actually smash the bottles, so to speak, right? Because it wasn't for timber. Hi, I'm Jan from sustainablebutterflies.com.au and one of the five pillars of sustainability is greenery, hence the content of this video. I was actually walking past this very tree only a few weeks ago with two friends of mine and they pointed this tree out, which reminded me of a pretty cool story that is worth sharing. Okay, so this tree is called Brachychaeton rupestris, commonly known as Queensland bottle tree. As you can see on the screen, its natural habitat is southern, central and southeastern Queensland, right? So it's well adapted to harsh desert and arid regions, but it can also grow in more rainforest, rainforest regions. It will grow outside uh, of its natural habitat, but only in cultivation. Now, in terms of its morphology and shape and habitat, harsh deserts, it is similar to succulents, which means that it, the insides of it are not hard timber, it's more like, of like an, a spongy fiber kind of thing, which makes it quite useless for construction, but it's useful for harvesting water and providing water, which, which brings me to the next point. So the indigenous people, they would cut through the soft bark of the tree to create water-like reservoirs and the water would trickle through to drip through the tree and then they would drink the water out of these reservoirs. Right? And they would do it when they were thirsty, but also the next year, next day, and next decade, as the indigenous people did. Right? They also ate the fruit and the roots of the tree. So it would sustain them during the harsh, dry periods. So what did the European farmers do when they found these trees in these harsh regions of Queensland? Well, they would obviously cut the trees, like most of the vegetation, but not for timber, because the timber is useless, but they would cut it like that, so it became kind of like a trough. Then they would cut a long hole with an axe, and that would provide water, and the spongy fiber would provide feed for cattle for maybe one or two days, a tree like that, and then it would be over, right? So what this simple example illustrates is that our Western civilization, which is based on the take-make waste, the linear approach, or in this instance I should say take use and let it rot instead of borrow use and return, right? Indigenous people, they have been using the trees for tens of thousands of years, but we can apply this uh, analogy onto anything, right? And in my upcoming web, web class, to which I would love to invite you, we're going to be talking about the circular economy, right? Because circular economy is trying to actually merge the linear, take, make, waste, and the circular, borrow, use and return, together, right? To take the best from both the Western and the indigenous civilizations and create our new path forward. So, what are you exactly going to discover in my upcoming web class? Number one, what are the three difficult waste types for many early childhood centers, parents and schools, and what you can do to reduce these difficult waste types? Number two, what is the only waste type that contributes to climate change and what you can do to reduce this waste type? How one large early childhood service reduce their general waste, the waste that ends up in landfill, by one-third and saved money. 
And number four, what could be the biggest opportunity, it's kind of like an emerging trend, for early childhood services and parents to improve the environmental footprint and save lots of money? So all of these things plus the circular economy are going to be covered at my upcoming Waste Terminator web classes. Register, there is a link in the video description and I'll see you there. Have a great day.